Our first song for worship this morning is Above All. Above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all. stand for our theme song broken vessels he says broken and scattered in mercy gathered and Good morning, guys. We got one faithful servant to say good morning. Good morning, guys. All right, good morning. All right, well, today we've got our um, Steps to Christ worship. 
We've got uh, chapter 11 by our friend Joanna. We've got special music from Bells today. So if you're online and you're watching, I hope you feel blessed by the music. And then we have Nate. Where's Nate? He's in the back. All right. But uh, just hope that our worship goes well and brings honor and glory to God. So let's just uh, start with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, heaven, Lord, once again, we just thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We just ask your presence to be here in worship as each person comes up front, that you would calm their nerves and allow them to speak the things that you've been talking to them about, and just ask that it would uh, be uh, something that would touch a person here, maybe a personal story or testimony, how they identify with you, Lord. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. opportunity to speak to the king of the universe as a friend would to one another. It elevates us, reorients us, and lets us breathe the air of heaven itself. God speaks to us through many different ways, but this alone is not enough. We also must pour our hearts to, the, to, bleh, to him and have an actual relationship with him. In order to commune with God, we should speak to him about our actual life. Prayer is an opening of your heart to God as a friend it doesn't bring him down to our level, but rather it brings us up to him. Jesus himself spent a lot of his time on earth in prayer. If he, the son of God, felt the need to pray, shouldn't we as sinners also feel the need much more than he did? <coughs> God is ready and willing to hear the sincere prayer of the humblest of his children, but we are so reluctant to pray. The angels in heaven regard communion with God as their highest joy. Why shouldn't we? Prayer is so important. Without it, we are in danger. We are in danger of growing careless and deviating from the right path. There are certain condi conditions upon which we there are certain conditions upon which we may expect that God will hear and answer our prayers. One of these, one of, one of the first of these, is that we need our help from Him. He has promised, "I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground." If we cling to sin and keep it within our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. We also must have faith when we pray, even when we don't receive exactly what we asked for, and even if it's not at the exact time, we still must have faith and expect the prayer will be answered. When we pray, we must be persistent. Colossians 4.2 says, continue in earnest prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Let nothing stop you from praying. Make every effort to keep that communion between you and God. Group prayer is also important, but we shouldn't neglect to pray alone. In solitude, let the soul be laid open to the inspecting eye of God. There is no inappropriate place to offer up a petition to God. Give your wants, your joys, your sorrows, your cares, and your fears to God. Our devotional exercises shouldn't only be about asking and receiving. We should also praise God more. We shouldn't look at the service to him as a painstaking exercise. It should be a pleasure to worship with the Lord and to take part in his work. Whoever offers, whoever offers praise glorifies God. Let, let us with reverent joy come, to off, come before our creator with thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Good morning. 
The piece we're going to play for you this morning is called Celtic Dance on Pleading Savior. And uh, it was uh, an arrangement of uh, an early American folk hymn tune that was written in the 1830s. Uh, it's a very appropriate uh, piece, I think, um, for all of us because Jesus, as our Savior, is pleading. And he's pleading for each one of us to come to him, to turn back to him, and to have that, that chance <clears throat> to be with him in heaven forever. How's everyone doing today? Good. Good. Who has ever had doubt? 
in God. I don't see any hands. Just, just a few? Okay. Um, today I'm going to be talking about doubt. Doubt can be a harsh thing, really hard. If, if something goes wrong, you know, you start doubting everything. It's really hard. Um, today I'm going to be talking about doubt. <laughs> and it's something we all encounter on our spiritual journey. But at the same time, doubt can be something to help draw ourselves closer to God. It's, it, it, it doesn't have to be an enemy to faith. It can be a magnifying glass to faith. It's, it's a lot to it. Um, I know it's a struggle. It's an inner nagging that keeps picking on you, you know, creeps into our minds, questioning what we believe and what and why we believe it. But here's the thing, doubt doesn't have to be the enemy of faith. It can be a catalyst for deeper exploration and a stronger foundation in our belief. <laughs> so how do we deal with doubt? The chapter offers us some invaluable insights. First and foremost, Bible. It's a guidebook. It's a guidebook. The more you read it, it, you understand what God's trying to tell you. God's talking to you through Bible. And reading the Bible can help you a lot. Um, especially when you're having doubt in yourself, reading the Bible, it helps. Uh, additionally, prayer plays a crucial role in overcoming doubt. We're urged to bring our doubts to God in prayer to pour out our hearts and seek his guidance. Through prayer, we can find clarity, peace, and renewed faith. Uh, let's read Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which tr transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Who has ever felt scared? Um, <laughs> when, when you have doubts, have you ever like thought to yourself and like, is God real? That's 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 a really big question. Do I believe in God? It's really hard. I have a few questions here um, to maybe like prevent doubt, you know. What triggers my doubt about faith? And am I actively seeking to strengthen my faith through prayer and studying the scripture? Um, do you focus on your doubts or God's promise and character? And how can I trust him? It's, I know, I know, I know all of us here has, has had doubt. Um, but in conclusion, chapter 12 is just telling us how to overcome doubt and what we can do to find confidence in ourselves and, uh, and we confront doubt with confidence knowing that God is with us every step of the way. That's it. Um, let's close with the word of prayer. Oh God, creator of the universe, we thank you for all the things that you've done for us and forgive us for the things we've done knowingly or unknowingly. Help us to overcome all the doubts we have and all the temptations we get from Satan. And help us to have a good day today. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.